This video's comment award goes to Nicolasaurus Rex. Leave a comment down below to have a chance for a shout out in the next episode. Make sure you're subscribed. Hey, what's up? Ready for another vlog? So today we're going to be trying to carpet my carpet plant right here that's called pearl weed amazing plant right there same plant you probably can't see it because the camera angle the same plant that is in here look at all that wow nice carpet right there yeah so i'm trying to do the same effect for these guys without co2 let's do it just a bit of a general update before we get right into the carpeting and stuff like that this is the forest of crips tank this is my Fluvo Edge 12 gallon. I'm sure you guys are aware it's been on the channel for quite a long time now, but if you're new, yeah, this is what it is. Uh, and you can probably tell there's a bit of a chunk missing here of Anubius Barteri. Yeah, like I said before, if you didn't catch it in my other video, I trimmed some of that and put it in the um, ADA. So it's in the back somewhere there collecting a bunch of crap but where i snipped it it's already shot out a new leaf so that tells me that this tank is pretty gucci for these guys so i'm glad now what i have in this tank are some low grade cherry shrimp um, that i just got from probably someone's cull and we have uh yeah now now i'm kind of feeling kind of sad after i said that i got some cherry shrimp from someone's cull <laughs> oh man <laughs> i need to do better but these guys are the bachelor endlers in here. There's only three endlers and they're all male and they all like to fight each other for space and try to be the top dog. And yeah, this tank is super low maintenance. I can't remember the last time I did a water change on it. It must have been at least a year ago. I do top ups, um, but that's all that I do for this tank. I feed really little and that's because of the Wallstead method, which is to put a lot of plants in and put very little fauna in. It is getting some algae here and there because of whatever imbalances, but these are really small areas of algae that I can take care of. And I can also just decrease the lighting hours because in a tank like this, lighting will really control a lot. So here's one of those low grade cherry shrimps. It almost looks yellow, which is kind of cool in itself. And for the substrate, um, it's an interesting substrate. I did not dirt this one. It's a mixture of ADA aqua soil and some inert substrate, some random inert substrate I put together. So these were, this tank is a relic. It's from the days before I was going crazy with dirted tanks. So yeah, but it still works. And I've actually got the plants on root tabs. And this is root tabs by Seekim. So Seekim Flourish root tabs. These crypts are super big and they don't usually get that big in just in an aquarium. Um, they got that big because I grew them immersed for a time. And this central piece here um, with the big, big leaves, that was actually a really small piece, random small little piece of crypt that I decided to grow immersed. I have some videos up for that, but you might need to hunt down those videos if you really wanna watch them. Yeah, and it grew all these runners and even more because now I have crypts in other tanks like this one. So those crypts are also from the immersed growth. It's just amazing. Immersed growth uh, for at least crypts in general does an amazing job. They grew really quick. And I grew them side by side with Anubius Nana Petite and that didn't work out too well for the Anubius. The Anubius barely grew. So it really is kind of species dependent. You have this guy. I've got to take this guy down soon because um, I've got some supplies coming. I know in the last few videos I was really up in the clouds and I'm not sure what I was going to do with this tank, but now I'm definitely, I've definitely got a plan. It looks absolutely horrendous right now. But before we do that, we're going to have to take care of the main attraction of this vlog, which is, like I said, to get this to start carpeting. So we're going to trim it back and basically replant the trimmings and alongside the existing stems that are already planted. And the most important thing is we want to try to get the instinct of this plant to start spreading instead of reaching for the stars, the light source like it has been. And that is what's the most important for a successful carpet, especially without CO2 to start. And that is what happened with this tank that I know can carpet without CO2, that's like living proof for me. So 
it's kind of encouraging to know that, yeah, pro weed can do it. We just gotta keep at it. Now there is a chance that it's going to start shooting runners like crazy, and their kind of runners are kind of like there's two types. There's、uh, this seating runner sort of thing, which is what we do not want, and then there's the normal running、uh, carpeting action. But yeah, the seating thing gets really annoying. It's almost as annoying as algae. It's very thin. And it it just gets everywhere. You know, beggars can't be choosers. We don't got CO2 in this. I actually ordered some CO2 to come, but like a DIY CO2 rig. But now I'm kind of debating on whether I should use it on this tank, because I have another tank in the future that I have in mind. Yeah, I'm wondering because there aren't that many high tech. There's actually no high tech required plants in here, so I don't know why I would be. Using CO2, but yeah, lots of things up in the air right now. We're gonna get some water from this tank into a little cup to get it ready because we're gonna have to put these trimmings somewhere, and a convenient little cup here will do a lot of good. And look, we got a nitro table that we can put the cup on. We're also going to be reducing the water level. Down to about half, or maybe even more than half, and this is so that it makes it easier to trim these guys and also to replant these guys. So my arm doesn't have to be reaching all the way down, so deep, you know. It's get your hands wet, not your arm wet. Now, pop quiz: What are some essential things before we take the water level down that much? You have five seconds. Just kidding. Time's up. Yes, you got it right. Heater and filter. We gotta unplug those. Unplug the filter because of obvious reasons. If the water level gets too low, then the filter is not going to be able to suck up water. For heater, if you don't unplug that and don't let it cool off before you、uh, immerse the heater due to low、uh, water level, then the heater might explode. It might crack, and then just you know it'll just break. So make sure to unplug your heater before big water changes. If you have floaters, take those out as well because it's going to make your life much easier without these floaters trying to get on your arm and getting everywhere and making everything messy. Wow, look at how tall my babies grew. I'm proud of some of them more than others. There are some short ones. Looking at you, buddy. Yeah, I wanted to get a clip of every one of them, even if they aren't that tall, because I'm still just trying to activate that carpeting spreading instinct of them. And look at this, we got a new shoot coming up in the Anubias plant transplant that I did. Yay! This Anubias nano over here attached to the rock, it's been giving out like three leaves per week. It's crazy. Small but powerfully growing and healthy. Now just gather. All of this good stuff, not the hydrocodone, just the pearl weed. Get your hands wet, bros. Nice little clump over here. Leave the little floaty bits. Oh, there's a little tall piece right there. I want to trim my Java moss as well. I know in the other vlog I called the Java moss Java fern. I'm so sorry. That's very embarrassing. I shall never make such a mistake again. Okay, the hyperlapse made everything look like it was a really short duration, but trust me, that was quite a long time and quite tedious. So yeah, well, I hope they start doing their thing and start carpeting out. We can only hope. No CO2, no fancy schmancy, and yeah, <laughs> hoping this will work. Man, this piece of salvinia is getting really big. Look at those leaves; they're like. Two times bigger than the regular Salvinia leaves. I wonder why. Maybe it's because it's directly under the lighting. It's getting some good nutrients. I think I'm gonna move this one out of here. This is like my outgrow tank. Oh, hey Rose, she's hungry, of course. I have no plans to ship.、Um, what you gonna eat my finger? Ow! Hey, that wasn't I. Yeah, I have no plans to ship out any.、Uh, Any plants right now because of the COVID season, and also I'm not really sure how to ship things because I'm a noob. If I figure things out, I might start a website. I might start selling some plants here and there. Who knows? Rose, you just bit my finger. What do you have to say for yourself? 
by the frickin' way, this, this little crap right here, this little crap. I thought she was shrimp safe. I thought it was safe journey home. We got it. Uh, she can stay in this tank forever without a problem. Well, just the other day, I came into my room and I, and I saw Rose. And she was down here. Okay, she was down here. And there was a corpse. There was a mono shrimp corpse right there. And she was looking at it. When I approached the tank, she looked up. And she was literally looking up at me and was like, I killed your shrimp, what you gonna do? That's what it exactly looked like. She just looked up from the corpse and she's like, yeah, what up, what's good? He did. And lo and behold, I couldn't find another Amano shrimp in this tank. I moved out as many cherries as I could find, and now this tank is shrimpless because this kid is not a friendly bugger. Not really uh, good at making friends, are you? I guess, I guess she takes after me, I'm not good at making friends either. <laughs> the moral of the story is, don't risk it, just don't risk it. Betta and shrimp, just forget about it, okay? This is exactly what I mean when I say like, don't do any tanks that have risk because one day you might wake up and all your favorite pets are gone. Man, those mono shrimp are so cool and they, and they single-handedly destroy the hair algae in my tank and they cost, you know, quite a bit. So if you don't want losses like this, stay clear of these stupid risks that that I just took. You already know, it's time for another session of comments and reviews on Fish Tank Vlogs. And of course we have our little jingle. Let me just move this out of the way here. That is not in tune. The best part of Fish Tank Vlogs is comments and reviews. Uh, I'm not perfect pitch, but I know that is not in tune. I will tune my guitar later. First tank sent in by Virgil S. Wood. You got the live plants, you got the hardscape. My favorite feature is definitely the middle feature where the plants are actually growing right to the surface of the water. You know they are growing nice. This tank is sent in by Milica. Now, Milica, this is not up to par. This tank might be a 10 gallon. It might even be a five gallon, maybe somewhere in between, but definitely no bigger than that. And you got two twin tail goldfish in this tank. Now, the first goldfish that is twin tail should have a 20 gallon all to itself. And if you want to add another fish, you can add another 10 gallons. So for example, if you want two goldfish, that should be 30 gallons. And that is what is recommended by far universally for goldfish. This tank is sent in by Jacob Evanson. Wow, my favorite thing that catches my eye are those java ferns up top being attached to the hardscape. At the pet store I work at, customer, you know so much about fish. Where do you learn all this? Me, I watch Fish for Thought. Whoa, that is awesome if you actually said that. And I'm really glad you think my videos are good enough to refer your customers to, to help them. Ripashi, it's not like I like you or anything. Hmm, yeah, Ripashi is a big softie on the inside. She can be a little harsh on the outside. Uh, but, you know, she's a good guy. Cory Gang, Cory Gang, Cory Gang. Hey, represent, homie. Let's go. Let's get it, bro. Remember when scoring was so much easier? Nowadays, a fully planted tank gets a 3.7 out of 5. Oh, no. I, I wouldn't necessarily say that's the case. Um, I don't know if scoring has gotten harder these days. I know for sure, though, that before, I was giving pretty crazy scores, like 0 out of 5. So... I feel like scoring might have gotten even easier. And yes, if you are wondering why I don't rate the tanks in this segment, it's not officially fish tank review and I want to relax. You know, I don't want to be giving out scores. Your fish tanks are all perfect if you are treating your fish correctly and doing the proper fish tank setup. The scores are usually just based on aesthetics. Now, if I do see a mistreated fish tank, or let's just take the example of, what's that person's name again? Milica, the one with the two goldfish in too small of an enclosure. I might, I mean, that will definitely take the score down quite a few notches. Husband buys a 10 gallon tank with an Oscar. Wife, divorce. Now, if only it worked like that. If only it was that easy and clean and clean cut and dry. If only people operated on logic such as this. It's often not the case. Sometimes in a relationship, you just want what's bad for you. I don't understand it either. A lot of people say it's because uh, they stay in the bad relationship because they think they can fix the person. Hey buddy, 
Better not be going around uprooting my plants by the way. When I was researching um, about Tropica Aqua soil, Tropica Aquarium soil, Aquarium soil by Tropica, a lot of people were saying stuff like, yo, this stuff got really high silicates and it's going to cause endless brown diatom bursts and blooms and you're never going to be happy with this substrate. And I saw those reviews and I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm, just, I'm still gonna get it. And even some of the people in the comment section can't tell if they're haters, but they were saying stuff like, yo, good luck with your Tropica soil. You're gonna be miserable your whole life from now on. Yeah, at first I was worried because, yo, there was a lot of brown diatoms in this tank. It was like blooming. I was like, oh man, blooming onions. You guys are right. So then I did like two or three water changes down to like here. So more than the 30, 25 gallons weekly water change. I usually do, and I did this within a week, so two or three water changes per week. And now I have no more brown diatoms. So, go for it, boys and girls. Go get your Tropica Aquarium soil. Don't have to worry, just just do a few water changes. I mean, it, it's not gonna kill you to, to change the water in your aquarium. Oh yeah, before I forget, one important point I have to make. Some people are like, Chris, okay, uh, whatever, brown diatoms, I don't care. How do I take care of brown algae? Apparently brown algae also blooms when there's a lot of silicates in the water and uh, Tropica Aquarium soil causes that as well. How do I get rid of that? Pro tip, fun fact, they're the same thing. Now, of course there are kinds of brown algae that appear some other times, but when you set up a new tank and you know your aquarium soil has a lot of silicates in it and you see these brown stuff all over your glass and they go away within a few water changes, those were brown diatoms. They're actually not algae, they're little single-celled organisms. That's pretty cool. But yeah, same thing, don't freak out, same thing. Okay, now we turn our attention to this guy. So the first thing we're gonna do is get rid of all the floaties up here. There's some salvinia, there's a lot of duckweed. Okay, so let's try to get all this junk out. I have the world's smallest net, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I don't know where I got this net, and I don't know why I'm using it. I've got way better nets that I could be using, but instead I'm using this net. Maybe I'm feeling cute, I don't know. Upon hearing that, most of you are like, Chris, please never say that again. Now the next step is gonna be quite annoying. Um, I'm gonna keep the water pretty still and try to do this as non-intrusively as possible because I wanna save the sand and I don't want the dirty stuff to mix with the sand. So I'm gonna try to suck this up without disturbing the water too much so that it stays on top of the sand and just gets sucked up. It sounds cleaner than it's gonna be. Uh, it's gonna be trickier than that. So I don't know how well it, I'm gonna be able to pull this one off. Anyways, the lights are off. That means it's six PM. I've been doing this vlog this whole day and these hyperlapses are really making it look like a few minutes, not even. Maybe I should use less hyperlapses. Anyways, yeah, 6 PM. I'm gonna go eat something now. I'm gonna go maybe watch some videos myself and respond to comments because that is my life. Really hope you guys enjoy this vlog. If you did, please hit that like button and subscribe. There'll be more videos to come and don't forget to get your hands wet.